Morning everyone. Hope everyone's having a fabulous Christmas Eve with this Christmas Santa rally. Markets are up by almost 6% to 2.39 trillion. We haven't seen these numbers since a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we're going to speak a little bit about uh, the price of cryptocurrencies, the price of Bitcoin. We're going to be looking at the chart as well. Also, we're going to see Definity's internet computer and how it's integrated with the Ethereum network, how uh, crypto companies in Japan are leaving the country due to high taxes and lack of regulation. Marathon Digital is going to be expanding its hash rate by more than 600% in the near future. Sand token shoots up because PwC just bought some land in it. Terra is now the second biggest DeFi platform on the planet. And also, how NFTs are a gateway drug to crypto. Finally, we're going to be speaking about crypto in South Korea, so stay tuned. The markets are up by a healthy 6%, Bitcoin 6%, everything is basically up except XRP. I don't know what's happening here, but it's not such a big movement and this might correct itself to green. Um, Terra is up by 17%, this is understandable, it's been going on a massive streak. Just two days ago it broke the $90 band and now it's bound to break the $100 band. Exciting, exciting times. Luna is the future. Looking down, uh, Decentraland up by 15%, VeChain up by 10%, Sandbox is up by almost 24% because PwC bought some land in Sandbox. So that's the market today. It's gone up, it's healthy. It's a Santa rally, so this was quite expected. Um, looking at the charts, we see that the price of Bitcoin barely touched the resistance level of 52,000, and then it's just trading in a band between 50 and 52,000. So we will see if it goes back down to the support level of 46,000 or it will, it will hit a new support level around 47 to 48,000. We're still waiting to see whether it's gonna break out and touch the $60,000 resistance level. And if it does, and if it goes above it, it might shoot up and all of the people's predictions of 98,000 Bitcoin might come true. But at the same time, it can go the other way. It just depends on how things go after Christmas and after New Year's. Well done for anyone who got in at the slow point of 45,000. It's a healthy profit. It is a healthy profit. In crypto, we shouldn't be greedy. We should take what we get. And if you made a 10% gain, take it. Take the money. Buy something uh, for Christmas. Use that money. Spend it. That's the only time you're going to know that you made money off your brains and your analytical skills are paying off. So Bitcoin, the largest cryptocurrency by market cap on Thursday, broke above 50,000. And this is for the first time since December 13th. This is due to increased activity in the markets. Everyone is buying, everyone is trading. People are going into stores, they're buying, they're stockpiling. They want to buy food for Christmas. They want to buy gifts for their kids. There's so much activity going on in both physical and digital markets that everything's going to go up. The sentiment and the consumer confidence will go up as well. So stocks will go up naturally. And when stocks go up, crypto follows as well. And crypto Twitter cheered for a so-called Santa rally for Bitcoin, which happens almost every year. Market cap struggled for more than a week to move above 50,000, while other alternative cryptos such as Luna and Matic rallied to record highs. But since we've talked about this before, Luna and Matic rallied to record highs is because they've had great, great developments in their network and Bitcoin barely anything. So it's understandable why Luna and Matic would shoot up while Bitcoin would struggle quite a bit. And this is causing some change in the narrative of Bitcoin is king because there are a lot of coins in the market now that do not follow Bitcoin. If you look at 2020, end of 2020, beginning of 2021, whenever Bitcoin moved up, everything else moved with it. Whenever Bitcoin moved down, everything moved with it. Today, that's not the case. Crypto is becoming more widespread and more adopted. Bitcoin does not command the boat anymore. It's a, maybe a co-pilot, but it doesn't command the boat. And we'll see a lot of asymmetry between Bitcoin and altcoins as well, because now different factors move the price of different coins. So Definity's internet computer opens Ethereum bridge. A new cross-chain bridge connecting Ethereum with internet computer will allow ERC20 tokens to exist natively on the latter's network. Definity is a non-profit organization and it was founded to help facilitate a decentralized layer of web infrastructure. It is backed by prominent funds, prominent VC funds such as A16Z, Polychain Capital, and many other 
big, big VC funds in the crypto business. Terabithia, this bridge, allows for cross-chain contract communication, asset monitoring, and transfer across different chains. It's built on a forked network of Ethereum scaling solution Starkware. It's a scaling solution which allows transactions to be done quickly and at a low fee, and it will enable contracts on both chains to communicate and allow anyone to mirror and use Ethereum assets on the internet computer and vice versa. So we're looking again at interoperability and how this has been a trend in 2021. A lot of blockchain technologies and a lot of blockchain platforms have become more and more interoperable. And this is another, yet another example. Ethereum and internet computer are now interoperable. It's just like how if you have a dollar and you have a euro, you can easily exchange that. It's interchangeable, interoperable. We will see that in the crypto markets as well. It's going to be as easy as going to a exchange bureau and exchanging your dollars for euros. Here, you can, you can trade your ERC tokens in any of the two networks. One big advantage of this bridge is that it can help create liquidity and complementary products for the user base of the two blockchains, such as NFTs or other decentralized finance products. So you take the advantages of both platforms and you combine it. Customers from both blockchains can benefit. And there's quite a big issue in Japan, such that taxes on crypto firms are leading some of the companies to leave the country. The crypto companies have implored authorities to change tax policies. The tax rates are around 35% for token issuers and also token receivers. Token listings are taxable in Japan and a project that lists some of its tokens on exchanges and keeps the rest in its treasury also has to pay taxes on what it holds if the market goes up. And also once the tokens are listed on the active market, issuers are liable to pay tax even if it doesn't sell. So as long as it's listed, it's taxable, which doesn't really make sense because you haven't made a profit on it, you haven't made any money off it, so how can it be taxable? And this is what's causing a lot of companies to go bankrupt and also leave the country because they don't have liquidity just because they have this liability to pay to the government. And if the core team doesn't have the funds to pay the taxes, as is often the case with early stage startups because they don't have much funding, it is forced to sell more tokens to the public. And this adversely affects both the token price and the overall health and trajectory of the project. If the core team sells tokens in the market, it's a bad sign. It's a sign of uh, dumping in the market and they, don't, they won't have enough tokens to create liquidity for funding of further developments of the project and also hiring of advisors, hiring new people, and they'll be forced to close down. Aside from high taxes, unclear regulation are severe problems in Japan. So as I said before, regulation isn't bad. It helps companies, it helps the crypto companies. It uh, makes everything more uh, linear. It creates a business environment where everyone can thrive. A lot of people are not dissolving their crypto companies in Japan and moving to Singapore. And this isn't good for Japan. If the authorities were to make the tax law on crypto equivalent to stocks, the estimated return to the Japan's crypto markets would be between $88 billion and $175 billion. That's a massive amount of money that could help Japan massively in a country where it's suffering from deflation and suffering from other economic woes. However, uh, Japan has made little progress in crypto regulation. And we'll have to see how it goes because Japan was promising to be one of the largest hubs for crypto and now it doesn't seem so because a lot of it is flowing out due to these reg uh, lack of regulation and high taxes. A lot of them are going to Singapore. So Marathon Digital is to expand hash rate by 600% with a record purchase of Bitcoin miners. They're going to have 199,000 operational miners by early 23, generating 23.3 exahashes. The hash rate is basically the speed at which each transaction in the blockchain takes place. So the higher the hash rate, the healthier the blockchain network because transactions are quicker, transactions are safer, and transactions become cheaper. If the hash rates are higher, the more transactions can be processed in a shorter amount of time and it helps keep the stability of the network and it helps keep the security of the network. So the fact that Marathon Digital wants to expand their hash rate by 600% and Marathon Digital being one of the biggest mine, Bitcoin miners in the world is a big deal. Um, it just shows that going into 2022 and 2023 and so forth, the Bitcoin ecosystem is going to be safer, it's going to be quicker and it's going to be cheaper. Sandbox went up by more than 10% overnight because PwC, the consulting firm in their Hong Kong office, bought some land in Sandbox in the form of NFTs. It's part experiment, part forward-thinking business play for PwC as brands from Nike to Facebook hitch their wagons to what some see as inevitable next step for the very on of being very online. So PwC 
they know that uh, metaverse is the future. They know that the NFT is the future. So they want to jump into it before everyone else does, before Deloitte does, before Ernest & Young does, before BDO or Grant Thornton do. If they can get in early, maybe they're going to be able to set up an office in Sandbox. Maybe they'll have a branch in Decentraland, who knows. It shows that there is some trust, or rather a lot of trust, in the metaverse because these big companies are jumping into it. Not only are they purchasing land on Sandbox, but they're going to leverage their expertise to advise clients who wish to embrace the metaverse on the full range of challenges presented by this emerging global digital phenomenon. PwC is a massive firm. They have more than a million clients. This is a million potential clients to come into the metaverse to purchase NFTs. And they're going to be offering services to these customers so that they can have a chance to come into the metaverse. Luna hit $20 billion in total value locked and they now surpassed Binance Smart Chain. They're now the second biggest DeFi chain in terms of TVL, Ethereum being number one, of course. Terra has 13 projects, which means that each project is over $1 billion in total value locked. BSC or Binance Smart Chain has 225 products. That's less than a billion dollars per project, which means that there's a lot of trust in Terra. There's a lot of money going into Terra. And each project is a massive scaling project with so much money flowing into it. I think at some point Terra is going to be head to head with Ethereum. It's only a matter of time. The way they're growing, in less than a month, their total value locked went from 11.9 billion to 20 billion. In less than a month, this is almost 70% increase. Interestingly, there's a narrative going on that NFTs will be a gateway drug to crypto. If we go back to 25 years, most of the population never interacted with the World Wide Web before they used email. So they're using the analogy of email as a gateway drug to the internet, as NFTs is a gateway drug to crypto. Also, the metaverse will become the new interface for people to engage with the web and each other. Not only uh, will more people go into the metaverse for gaming, but also, as Bill Gates said a couple of weeks ago, he expects that more than 50% of meetings by 2023 will be on the metaverse. This isn't speculation. Bill Gates himself said that the metaverse is going to be the place where most meetings take place. Especially now with the narrative that work from home is becoming more common. Who wants to use their webcam and have boring Teams and Zoom meetings? The metaverse is a lot more exciting, a lot more engaging, and I think it's going to move more and more into it. Uh, they also say that crypto-based gaming will become even more popular and that we'll see an increased merging between blockchain and traditional gaming communities. We now saw that Ubisoft is going to launch some NFTs in Tom Clancy, which is already meaning that blockchain and traditional gaming is becoming merged. And this is going to keep on going in the, in the future. I wouldn't be surprised if Call of Duty starts going into NFTs just because they love monetizing their products. As we saw the in, with Internet Computer and Ethereum, as adoption continues to accelerate, conversations about scalability and interoperability will continue. I believe that in the coming years, different blockchains are going to be interoperable. They're going to be as easy to communicate as going to an exchange bureau. You want some dollars, I have some euros, let's exchange it. In news about South Korea, the big four South Korean crypto exchanges hired more than 600 employees in 2021. The big four companies, Upbit, Bitthumb, Corbit and Coinwon, hired 620 new staff members this year, and they've been growing and will continue to grow going into 2022. Not only have um, they been hiring, but we've seen salaries going up by crazy amounts, up by 150%. I think that's interesting about this hiring spree is how they've been hiring former senior level regulators, including ex-officials from the Financial Supervisory Service, a body with indirect control over the way crypto is policed in the country. Bitthumb this month also completed the hire of a former grade 5 civil servant from the FSC, the regulator that governs the sector. I think they expect crypto to be regulated very, very soon. So they're hiring these ex-former senior level regulators or officials in order to have big, big lobbying powers and getting regulations passed which benefit them, which makes sense. They have a lot of money to spend. Why not spend on lobbying? That's how the big companies do it. They can do it too. Also, crypto firms in South Korea are growing so large, they're ready to snap up stakes in the conventional banking sector. In November, the upbit operator Dunamo bought a minority stake in Wuri Bank, one of the biggest banking groups in South Korea. We are expecting to see more in M&A activity from crypto exchanges and their operators in the year ahead, and I think they're going to snap up a lot more 
traditional companies going forward just because they want to have a broad portfolio and they want to have a lot more services in their offering as well and they can leverage these services for their own benefit too and it so that's all for today's video thank you for watching if you like this video please click on the thumbs up button please hit the subscribe button as well i will see you for the next video invest wisely cheers